All right, next up is the losers. And right away, I'm just gonna get right into this, okay? Five tough guys go on a mission against a drug lord in Bolivia. The abort the mission, we see a bus full of little kids right off the target. And there's no luck. No luck there. A voice named Max, quote unquote, orders a plane to carry out a bombing run. The tough guys break in and rescue the kids just in time. A helicopter sent for them. A helicopter is sent for them. There's no room on the copter except for the kids. The copter is shot down. The kids die. Yeah, I know. Weak start. That was supposed to be us, they say, regarding the smoldering wreckage. A close-up of the flames, still looking at a toy bear, was just downright... I see God's me for some reason, I don't know. And uh, whenever, by the way, this is a rule that if a kid ever gets on a copter in an action film and is told to take good care of his bear, yeah, the kid's going down, sadly, I'm afraid. Now, the, the, of course, the tough guys rip out their dog tanks and, you know, into the, and they throw them into the flames and now they are the losers dedicated to bringing the mysterious Max to justice. Who is he? They guess maybe CIA special, yada 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 yada, nobody knows. <laughs> Meanwhile, they are dead, yeah. And stranded in Bolivia, no passports, no money, anything. You think I'm giving away too much, people? That was the pre-title sequence. Yeah, that, that wasn't even the first 20 or 30 minutes of the movie. <laughs> now we meet them one by one. There's Clay, played by like Jeffrey Dean Morgan. There's Jensen, played by the usually stone-faced, yet sometimes okay, Chris Evans. There's Roke, played by Idris Elba, another decent actor. Pooch, played by Columbus Shore, fresh off his funny role in Death at a Funeral. And Cougar, played by Oscar Janetta. Now, each has a specialty. They, you know, they have a command, I guess, ordnance, rocket, sniper, blah, 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 blah. They are rugged, macho, wise action heroes. They're pretty much uh, characters you see in every action movie that you can ever want to see. And of course, yada yada yada. Uh, then we meet Aisha. She's played by Zoe Saldana, who seems to be in every movie these days. And um, of course, she is an insanely beautiful girl. And you didn't notice that much in Avatar, but maybe you've seen that more in films like Death at a Funeral, or even the dreadful Britney Spears film Crossroads. Watch that on mute if you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, so anyway, so she poses as a bar girl to seduce her way into Clay's room. They have a deadly fight, they destroy the room, burn down the hotel. This is really, really over-the-top stuff that every action film seems to have these days. Now, I really didn't, I really wasn't following this well. Now, Aisha knows who Max really is, where he is and how to get him. And she has, she has the resources to get the losers back to the United States, arm them, rent them helicopters, and yada, 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 yada. They want to avenge those kids. Can Aisha be trusted? We don't know. We really don't know through most of the movie. Nor is it clear uh, what this Max is up to. Now, here's actually uh, here, here's actually something that's the first in action films. He demonstrates the first green weapon of mass destruction. It totally destroys the target, yet has no pollution to the atmosphere. How's that for progress, people? Huh? Anyway, how he plans to move the weapon and what his secret computer files are there to provide is, you know, what the movie kind of divulges. Now, Max is played by Jason Patrick, who can actually make a very convincing, snarky kind of guy. Now, this may shock you all. Now, the, why did I get such a long description? Because I pretty much described almost every kind of action film you could think of, which is a different kind of thing sort of the story. But you know what? I really like this movie a lot. Why? Because this is what happens when you watch a mindless action film and you turn your mind off for an, a couple hours. Jason Statham's films are just silly and stupid. This is silly because it wants to be. Now, and it's silly, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. Now, you may say the crank films do the same things. They're beyond silly and it's stupid. Now, this is the right level of this action silly right here. This is not brilliant in any sense of the word, but as an entertainer, it's one of the best action films I've seen in I don't know how long. Not counting, of course, films like Iron Man or Batman. Now, what I, what I also love about this is that how everything does come together, and actually, if you really think about it, it makes sense in a weird, stupid action film kind of way. The Losers has talented actors, not nobody great, but that's what a film like this calls for. It, the way its over-the-top sequences are done are, are made to be campy. It's made to be a self-parody kind of, kind of thing in, in, a, in the sense of the action genre. And it, it kind of can laugh at itself without being overly silly. The crank films, if the crank films kind of turn it down a notch, it might have been decent, but really, the just the things going on in that movie just made me roll my eyes here. I was just captivated. That's something I can explain. I did my eyes whenever off the screen. You know, just like I knew what I was watching, I'd probably drop my IQ 30 points. But either way, the losers 
it's way over the top, it's overkill, it's sometimes ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. I can't stress that enough. So yes, we do not people, I'm giving the losers four stars out of five.